Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show. We are your source for market intelligence, forecasts, and success strategies. I'm Michael Bull. Thank you for being with us today or this evening, since this is a podcast <laughs> video. You may be watching or listening anytime. Now, this segment is brought to you by Byproxy.com. Check, check them out. They're a new service. It is a national listing service, so it's free to list properties and check them and look at properties at Byproxy.com. Well, today we are have an interesting show for you. The name of the show is Design, Construction, and Development trends and I think there's a lot of questions from a lot of people out there uh, what what is going there's so many changes in use and all types of property and uh, another question I think some of our listeners and viewers have is what about the volume of design projects are, are things starting to slow down we have an expert for us in studio one today welcome Bruce McAvoy he's design principal with Perkins Will uh, Bruce thanks for being with us again Thanks, Michael. It's great to be back. Well, we appreciate it. And uh, like, like I said in the opening, I think the, the first question is, uh, are you seeing any slowdown with projects today? Uh, what, what's ahead? Uh, honestly, we don't see any slowdown at all. I think we haven't been busier in, since pre, uh, pre-collapse, you know, 2006, 2007. Uh, endless proposals, and it seems like all the market sectors we're involved in, um, in most of the regions, at least in North America, are, are hitting. So that's, you know, our institutional and government clients, higher ed, uh, interiors, projects, architecture, uh, across the board, really. Um, I don't think Perkins Will could be any busier. And yeah. there's a real there's a real talent uh, shortage out there as well. Just seeing that um, uh, pipeline ahead of us, uh, people are scrambling for, for good talent. Yeah. So you guys are hiring and looking for good people, right? Absolutely, yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's good to hear because I think some people are thinking, well, maybe things are, are slowing down a bit and uh, you guys have to design it before it can get built, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, these aren't small projects. So yeah. the timeline on these things are at least a couple of years. Yeah. So um, I, th- I feel pretty good about the future and we usually see um, if there is sort of indications of a slowdown we'll see a market shift perhaps some of our institutional clients will try and take advantage of hitting a downturn and um, they're already going so yeah. I don't think anybody's waiting and uh, we're, we're not seeing anything on the horizon well that's good I think you're a much more forward indicator than I am to my uh, gas dock attendant at the, <laughs> at the lake I'll pull in there and he says uh, my girl you're filling up and one day I asked him, I said, why do you always ask me if I'm filling up? He said, when you get half a tank, I'm filling everything. <laughs> That's good. So um, another challenge that all of our clients are seeing, it seems to be really impacting uh, new supply and, and just operations in general, are rising construction costs. So, you know, what are your trends you're seeing there? How's it impacting uh, your clients? Well, it's, um, it's, it's kind of a parallel track to exactly where we are in our offices. Uh, the GCs that we work with and collaborate on a regular basis, they're seeing it in the submarket. So those guys couldn't be any busier either. So, mm-hmm. And I think with a, a shortage, again, of probably people in the field, we're seeing some really crazy pricing come back. It's, it's made our job really tough to forecast, uh, especially on these uh, jobs with a longer runway, mm-hmm. what that's really going to look like by the time um, we're ready to get into the dirt. Yeah, but of course, when a client asks you, hey, how much my well, cost increase over the two years, you can't say, oh, hey, have, we have no idea. So <laughs> you're throwing something out there. What, what's yeah. the range you guys yeah. are giving? I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, uh-huh. I, I we don't even do it anymore because I'm seeing actually some products we used to, um, you know, have a strata of, okay, we can we can use so much money or count on, say, precast or something on the job or, mm-hmm. or structure, or, you know, concrete steel versus one another and depending on the market the sub market in that area or region of the states um, we're seeing stuff flip back and forth from month to month so right. there's no real uh, there's not a lot of predictability right now I think it's yeah. just um, you're you're at the whim of when your project hits and what are the projects in proximity to that uh, to that job so. yeah so you're here probably then the developers are kind of picking their own number and what are they picking five percent a year or something you think or increase I, I'd say more I'd probably more. say seven I don't wow. know um, yeah. it's you know, there's there's no telling because uh, you know mm-hmm. we just keep seeing these things kind of go back and forth. And what it what it does, is it makes our job a little tougher. That we're trying to be flexible and dynamic as we mm-hmm. go through this project, yeah. or go through all of our projects. 
and figure out if there's a way, you know, as, as things start to solidify, the banks are involved, you know, you start to get into the, the, the subsurface construction. Um, we're still making decisions, yeah. um, which, which makes our job harder. And uh, Yeah, so something might start off very cool and awesome, and then it comes down to <laughs> cost, and you're like, oh. We, we try and maintain, you know, design intent. We try yeah. and deliver the same project, but... Yeah. Um, you know, recently we've had a debate uh, on projects about what that final skin palette's going to be. You know, is it mm -hmm. is it precast? Is it is it metal panel? Mm -hmm. And we've gone back and forth a couple of times. You know, in the last few months of, of the process. Yeah. So. so that's kind of something that's ongoing as well. People changing the actual products they're using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, let's talk about sustainability uh, and wellness because. You know, it's always been a, in a hot topic, this sustainability, mm -hmm. but now it seems like with, we, with our clients that we help with office space in Atlanta, uh, it's all about wellness. What are you guys seeing in, in your world? Yeah, definitely. It's, um, I think, you know, we went through um, a period of talking about sustainability really as building performance. Mm -hmm. um, Perkins & Well was one of the, you know, the, the leaders in that when it started, and we, co we committed to that, but it's really starting to envelop a lot more than just, uh, you know, your footprint as far as the building when it comes to utilities, energy, and water. We're seeing wellness be a huge topic because, I mean, when you look at any organization, their big ex biggest expense is their people. So uh, having them more engaged, more healthy, uh, you know, at, at work um, is something that, you know, adds to their bottom line, like, you know, better than any utility bill, that's for sure. Absolutely. And along with wellness, we're starting to see a whole host of other issues come into play, um, like resilience and biophilia. Um, Tell all us about things. resilience. Resilience is really um, trying to create a project that's a little bit more uh, shock absorbent. Um, we're living in some pretty crazy times with weather and you know climate change, and just natural stressors. You know, we're seeing uh, we're seeing uh, flooding, we're seeing droughts, we're seeing all sorts of stuff. So. Um, Resilience is really kind of knowing what those stressors are going to be in the future, mm -hmm. planning for them, and then trying to design it into the project. Um, that might have to do with um, also some regenerative strategies. Mm -hmm. We're looking more and more with clients about, you know, what their solar footprint is. Can they generate power on site? Um, mm -hmm. Most of our projects now, uh, we're embracing the idea of uh, on-site water. So capturing rainwater, um, keeping it in a cistern, and even, uh, even treating it on site. Yeah. Um, we just did that for um, an example. We just did that here in Atlanta for uh, Interface. They, they mm -hmm. did an adaptive reuse on a small project, did their own water, and it was, um, it was kind of funny about a month, maybe two weeks after they were in the building, Atlanta had a, a big water main break and an issue with water, and it was a boil, but they were fine because um, they treat all their water on site and yeah. capture it from rainwater. That's so. a cool building. My yeah. uh, daughter is uh, working with, them, with Interface right now. Oh, great. Uh, and uh, she's... Uh, hopefully we'll go full time, but she's graduated yeah. from UGA uh, and she studied LEED and sustainability, yeah. uh, wellness certification. She's an environmental economics major. Uh, so uh, that's a great company. Hopefully there. that'll be her new home. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Um, and you mentioned biophilia, right? Yes. What is that? So biophilia is um, a really interesting kind of development when we talk about engagement and, and making humans perform better. Mm -hmm. Um, and really what it is, it's tapping into the primal, um, primal components of who you are. We were all, you know, on the Savannah plane at some point, and, you know, we were, we were kind of becoming the sophisticated apes we are today. Mm -hmm. um, and so what uh, biophilia really does is it starts to recognize this relationship with nature, these patterns of nature, and we try and build those into the space. Um, when we do that, we're noticing that people heal better, they're more engaged, they perform better, they have greater cognitive ability. So there's just a whole host of benefits to doing this. And I think it was something that was done intuitively in good design mm -hmm. uh, earlier. But now that we're getting uh, a little bit more kind of like our buildings and wellness, you know, really digging into this, uh, there's some there's some great uh, research going on that's showing us the real benefits of and this. And what are some of the features that you might find in a building that you designed with biophilia in mind? Well. I think, again, the, the proximity to nature, whether that's a physical proximity, also a visual proximity to nature. Mm -hmm. uh, other things that we used to do of trying to tune a building, say, to a perfect temperature across a floor plate that was absolute, you know, within one degree. Mm -hmm. We're seeing now this idea of reflecting nature, right? So there might be a cool side to the building and a hot side of the building. Not a huge swing, but just enough so that when people move around, they can, uh, they can actually feel the difference. Um, 
the, the patterns in sort of an organized chaos that you see in nature mm -hmm. is something that we're starting to use, um, you know, Fibonacci series, things like that, and patterning. Um, where, again, there's something there that just identifies with, with us as humans and, and how we're pre-programmed. Not just a square box that's always the same temperature. Absolutely. Um, you know, water is another great example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, when you think about uh, dialing back the clock uh, from a, to, you know, our evolutionary standpoint, we're kind of predisposed and pre-programmed to hear water as a survival instinct. So we're, we're finding out that in noisy environments or a lot of our urban projects, uh, the presence of the sound of water kind of starts to mask that noise, that nuisance noise that might be in the background. And it's a great sort of, um, you know, again, wellness strategy that people then are more engaged, they're more present, and they're better at what they do. I know, love whatever that. Whatever that business might be. I love that. So not only the hearing the water, yeah. um, which gives a nice ambient sound, right? So yeah. you're not hearing all the noise around you, uh, but also just seeing it, right? Yeah, yeah. See, and then the, the crazy part is not hearing the other noise, yeah. um, you know, it's just, uh, it's one of those things, again, I think it's just, it's primal, it's within us, and, and if we can tap into that, the great part about that is that's generational consistency, so this, I don't think, you know, this isn't a trend or something, uh, mm -hmm. this is just better design, kind of like uh, we talked about sustainability when that was a, you know, a new thing we were talking about, about better, better performance out of our buildings or, or right. wellness strategies, just yeah. better design. Right. What about... Um, outdoor spaces are you see more of that that that's an important um, component to me to be able to maybe get outside especially in an environment if you live in a area of the country where you have available more time outside like we were talking earlier I guess in, a, in Atlanta where we are today you could be working outside what four or five months absolutely you know, you're, you're absolutely. seeing that more in design absolutely um, clients more and more want it mm -hmm. I think um, we're seeing at least in the corporate uh, market sector mm -hmm. A lot of our, you know, tenants or a lot of our uh, um, partners, you know, th it's kind of a lifestyle now, that yeah. type of work. So um, when you talk about wellness strategies and sort of the idea of how much time we're spending indoors at the office, having these moments of refresh or actually building into a project programmable, workable space for teams, um, a lot of roof decks, um, we're seeing, you know, patios, terraces, things like that. But again, not just for a place to go out and take a break. Um, actually have a meeting. Um, we have a client right now who um, uh, loves to talk about his walking meetings. Mm -hmm. So uh, he has a campus and um, he loves to grab his team and they go for a 10 minute walk at the beginning of the week and, and uh, basically prep for that week. And uh, you know, the site is becoming as much of a business tool as the building we design. Yeah, and that's great. And you, and you see these campus, corporate campuses where you have outdoor areas where you can walk out of the building and do that, but yeah. in more of these uh, urban markets, you're having to really create that in the building, right, or yeah. on top yeah. of the building. Yeah. So you've done that, what, in Nashville and Atlanta? And yeah, the, the project I mentioned a second ago, uh, mm -hmm. Interface, had mm -hmm. a, uh, some adaptive reuse, had an old uh, rooftop that we renovated mm -hmm. and um, put a generous roof deck on, and they mm -hmm. use it all the time now. Yeah. Um, in Nashville, it was a, a true urban site, uh, mm -hmm. similar to Interface. But there we took a notch out of the building uh, up in the tower and gave people a wonderful point of prospect to kind of uh, see the vista of downtown Nashville. Mm -hmm. Again, um, you know, the ability to incorporate some plants and some natural features on those decks. And mm -hmm. um, I think it really identifies with people and gives them another option, a, another work choice while they're, uh, they're moving through their day. That's awesome. So what's in the future of all this? Any, are we going to be like the Jetsons? Are we going to have treadmills hanging off the side of the building? <laughs> so what's the future hold? I, you know, I don't know. I think, um, I think it's really interesting. Um, you know, we've kind of moved through other trends like third workplace, and you've seen a lot of corporate buildings um, kind of flip the model of what used to be pass-through lobbies to the coffee shop sort of hangout lobby mm -hmm. um, to, again, offer tenants another place to go or their talent another place to go. Mm -hmm. um, I think technology is playing a huge part in this, but what's, uh, what's interesting is the, the counterpoint to that, These, the notion of biophilia and that we are kind of, you know, you know we're, we're best when we're together physically. Um, you see that in other things like, uh, you know, the trend with WeWork and a lot of these office share uh, places. So um, I, think, I think that offices are going to become uh, closer to hospitality than they are to the last generation's uh, office. Yeah, that's so, good. Are you going to see any completely self, I guess there's, what, one or two in the country, any self-sufficient buildings that, that can really create all their own utilities? Yeah, I think so. I think... Um, 
you know, living buildings are, are a very interesting, mm -hmm. um, a very interesting thing right now. And the technology is there. It's a question, I think, usually of investment and scale. Yeah. Um, and also in urban environments, like we looked at that for interface and we were completely, our solar footprint, we were completely shadowed out. It's nestled between two towers mm -hmm. in the heart of uh, Midtown Atlanta and there was a lot of proximity of tall buildings. So, um, But I think it's something that's on the horizon and we're mm -hmm. trying it um, on several projects. Yeah. Um, been successful on a few, but um, it's not easy to do, but the yeah. technology's there and and it keeps improving every year. Yeah, and that technology is getting less expensive, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, well, that's yeah. awesome. Well, Bruce, great information as usual, sir. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. And Appreciate stay with us. We'll have more on design, construction, and development trends right after this short break. Stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. America's Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty. For customized asset and occupancy solutions, visit bullrealty.com. Commercial Agent Success Strategies, incredible training for commercial agents. Visit commercialagentsuccess.com. Bomi International, for facilities and property management education, visit bomi.org. Buyproxy.com, your global commercial real estate listing service. Visit buyproxy.com. Red IQ, turning multifamily data into actionable intelligence. Visit rediq.com.